Hello, uh, welcome. Welcome to the BA Graphic Design and Media Open Day online webinar. Um, this presentation is really going to be talking all about the graphic design course, what you expected on the graphic design course, what it means, what we cover, who is teaching on the sessions, and also the general philosophy and whole fundamentals of the BA Honours Graphic and Media Design course. But before we start with anything, I just wanted to introduce myself. My name is Ian Carr. I am the course leader for Graphic and Media Design, along with many, many, many other tutors, lecturers, and support staff that work on the course as well. And if you ever do want to contact me for any particular reason, you can get my emails, uh, email address at the end of the session. Um, there's also other contacts at the end of the session. And if you also have any questions throughout this whole period, you can put them into the chat room. And towards the end of this, we can then go through some of those questions as well. So do be thinking of them, keep hold of them as we go through this whole presentation. But I'm here to talk about really the um, the course and how it's situated within one of sort of six colleges within the University of the Arts and the London Co College of Communication not only is it in central London but it is part of this wider network of the University of the Arts which covers not just LCC but Camberwell, St Martins, um, London College of Fashion, uh, Wimbledon and Chelsea as well. So we're a much wider network of colleges beyond just what we offer here at the London College of Communication and that involves you and engages you to being part of a much richer creative community um, really um, establishing yourself within the communities within London and beyond as well. But just to tell you a little bit of the history of the London College of Communication, um, it really was the graphics course originally on the, the London College of Communication was one of the first ever kind of graphic design courses as part of formerly of London College of Print. And this was established by Tom Ecclesley in 1954 as one of the sort of pioneering graphic design courses that based a, for individuals and students to really kind of hone their skills for their practice and their careers. And we, right now, still build upon this philosophy, still build upon this ethos of preparing individuals for work placements or for further career development, further education, whatever that may look like. And we still fit to that uh, fundamentals and ethos of the idea that we're not only designers, but we're artists, we're creatives, we're thinkers, we're technicians, we're practical people and conceptual people as well. So we see ourselves as a multidisciplinary course, and I'm going to talk about what that means a little bit later, but we see ourselves as an artist, we see ourselves as a designer, fundamentally a creative thinker, and problem solver that challenges not just what we do here, but everything in the outside world. And as part of the University of the Arts, within that, the London College of Communication um, sits within it, the design school. And we are part of the design school, which really has a, a, a very holistic, multidisciplinary, and very international community that's really kind of recognized for its practice, its industry, industry speakers, its production, its portfolios, its, its ability to give individuals the opportunity to move forward into their individual practice, whatever that may be. And as part of that enrichment, you get the engagement of the whole design school and everything that has to offer, not just what is on offer within the course of graphic and media design. And as part of that, okay, it is all about the, the really that fundamentals to engage people with their practice to then become employable or to move to a career or research or a, a master's or postgraduate course in whichever direction they want to. And they are supported by us to develop and discover individual practices um, based upon the experience, um, the input, the, um, the knowledge, and the, the overall kind of applied nature of the course 
to really kind of hone in to, uh, hone in, sorry, to individuals' uh, talents and creative direction. But the vision of the course itself, it really is sort of developed uh, a really strong voice around the ideas of multidisciplinary um, problem solving and design creativity. Whether it is that you're engaging with spaces, materials, brands, elements, new physical and new technologies and ways of working and engaging with those, we give you the experience to try many different elements and many different areas of graphic and both media design and whether that is extremely analog or whether that is more with a technological um, background or maybe even both what we really look for and what we really kind of inspire within the students is to try many different forms of media many different forms of technology to find their own path to find their own creative voice and we engage in that development with a critical nature, with a material nature, with an applied nature throughout the whole process of the three years to give you what we consider to be one of the best portfolios in the industry. And as part of that, we engage with responsible design through that practice. So wherever, wherever you are using technology or an analog medium or it's conceptual or working with communities, whatever that looks like, it's the idea of creating a voice. What is your design voice? Does it contribute to something that has a responsible and also ethical nature as being part of the design process. So we use design as a tool for thinking, we use a type design as a tool for being responsible and forth, forward looking really in the areas and practice of graphic design and visual media and what that might look like. And that might be through challenging particular concepts or challenging particular um, issues, social issues and statements that might be uh, contemporary or from the individual's um, you know, ideas and subject matters that they want to push through within their projects, but also on a vocational level, what can this mean on a material level just as much as it is on a sociable level as well. We are future looking, we're always looking at the ideas of using new technology in many different ways and that doesn't necessarily mean always using new and immediate technologies and using new contemporary technologies but also looking at the history and the use of technology whether that's analog or technological whatever that may be and how those worlds can come together to discover new practices and new ways of working and new engagements to really kind of give a very flexible and adaptable way of working in in the future because as you kind of work um, towards looking at an industry practice or whether it's a specific type of research you're looking for looking into it is the idea of bringing practices together it is the idea of communicating something um, being the first thought within the design project but then applying something which is best relevant to communicate that method and sometimes that might be analog and sometimes that might be digital sometimes that might be workshop based and sometimes you know it might be more engagement through into communities so it's about looking at these kind of um, sort of future ways of working to really kind of understand um, your needs your needs within that project as well and as part of the course, um, which I'm going to talk a little bit more about the structure of it in a second, we offer the Diploma in Professional Studies. And the Diploma in Professional Studies was really one of the first, well, it's one of the first um, courses really, uh, well, the University of the Arts is one of the first to offer this individual professional studies year, where in year one, you can you do your, your, the standard year within graphic and media design. Year two is the second year in graphic and media design, which hone your skills, which I'm going to talk about in a second. But you do have the option to apply for the diploma in professional studies in that in a sort of a third year of which you can work with external partners in many different shapes and sizes of whatever that may be to hone in the skills of your practice um, and that 
and you get the support then from us, from UAL, to work with any industry practice that you see best fits your practice and best really kind of hones in for your portfolio as well. So really you get the opportunity to work in real world situations, real clients, um, on real life briefs, and then you get the opportunity then to come back into what we then call your fourth year out of the out of the set and then complete your um your your full ba qualification within that fourth year as well and many individuals really do really relish at taking this opportunity to work with many kind of different industry partners which i'll talk about um in a second um it's a really great opportunity to sort of, you know, not only work within the space within London and some of the studios that we have contacts with, but maybe some international studios and studios that you might already have contacted with maybe some particular businesses. Um, and we can really help make those connections with those individuals, with those studios and with those, um, those people as well. So for example, we have many individuals working with Apple. We have many individuals maybe working with research studios in London. We have many, for example, working with the Tate. We have many working at Segmeister Studios as well. And these are just some examples of the wider range of opportunities that the Dep Diploma in Professional Studies has. From small individual community groups and working on little projects, whatever that might look like, to working with large industry leading partners in that sector as well. So it, this is another opportunity that the course has to really to give you that sort of one-to-one um, uh, -one experience to really kind of hone your skills and your portfolio. However, within um, graphic and media design, we have a range of a wide range of areas of practice all the way through to image making and brand and visual systems, uh, documentary, sculpture, uh, 3D, audio, narrative. Um, there, there are so many uh, future design, speculative design within it. The reason we have so many kind of different areas of practice is because our philosophy is really about understanding the situation and the context that you are moving into within the industry and many industries industries really have this idea that you need to share skills with others so we give you the experience of working within many different areas of practice because we often feel that many of the opportunities are there for flexible people to be able to move or to be able to communicate with other designers in other areas and that's something that we really relish, that the idea that it's the topic, the subject, is, is the, the sort of the crucial part of the project, but sometimes the area of the method of communicating it might be different, and it's about best fitting that practice sometimes contextually to whatever it is that you're trying to kind of say through that project. And as part of that, we really support this this wide area of practice with a great range of um, academic and support staff and lecturers that work within those specialisms. So there is me, for example, um, I specialize in more the sort of graphic design and audiovisual, but year one coordinator, Craig really focuses on design theory and graphic image making. Alex Cooper, who is the year two coordinator, focuses much more on typography and print, where Maria, the year three coordinator, really focuses towards more information and editorial design. Now, I'm not saying that those years are focused in those, but these are the specialisms of particular individuals. We have many individuals as part of the sort of lecturing team on GMD and you can tap into and really work with these individuals to really support your practice, whether that is like examples here, whether it's in branding and identity, graphic and typography, editorial design and typography, uh, and so many more other skills, um, design innovation, design for social change, documentary and moving imaging, and also responsible design, 
And there are many specialisms that we have to offer through our staff and including the areas of emerging technologies, whether that's looking at narrative media, whether that's looking at code, whether that's looking at the digital experience of something as well within motion design, whether that is the sort of new form of emerging technologies that's sort of coming around the corner, we have the staff to support your learning needs within that area, not only to introduce you to those technologies, but also to really engage you, to really push you, and really to motivate you through those projects in those specialist areas. To support this, we also at the LCC have a very wide range of facilities to really to support all of the practical needs that you have with your project. We are a studio-based project, and as part of that, we have the 3D workshops. We have a creative technology lab for anybody that wants to work with new media and new technology. We have a digital space to support anybody with moving image 3D rendering. We have a kit room to really facilitate the lending of cameras, uh, um, any form of equipment that that may be, lighting, cameras, audio equipment on a daily or hourly basis. We have access to photography studios, including dark rooms and photo studios to photograph work in whatever setting that you uh, feel best is part of your work. We have print and print finishing as part of the tactile and kind of understanding of the actual making and the production of maybe something like a book or something that is more paper-based. Printmaking, including silkscreen printing, um, lipo printing, letterpress. We also have spaces for social engagement to work with others, including the canteen and the typo cafe, which are often not just used as, as social spaces but spaces where people can work on their projects in an environment which is engaging with many students and as part of that on site we have a shop to support all of those needs whether you need the equipment whether you speak to the technicians and you need a specialist piece of equipment um, we have that on offer here as part of the lcc facilities now just to give you a short introduction really of the variety of the work that we have i'm just going to play this little sort of showcase video to give you a bit of an insight of everything that the students have been doing over the past year <laughs> Great, thanks. Um, that gives you a really kind of good insight into not only, like I said, the variety of the work that happens, but the level of professionalism that the students create at the end of year three. 
And what we really focus on by the end of that is to have that professional uh, quality standard, industry standard portfolio where individuals feel extremely confident and extremely comfortable of moving into the industry, moving into a job that they are really aiming for, or maybe into postgrad, maybe into uh, research or whatever direction they want to go to, we really support them with that portfolio and those changes. And I'm going to talk a little bit next about the structure, what it means to be in year one, year two and year three and what that looks like. Year one for graphic and media design is really all about exploration. It's really all about introduction to the design principles, what that looks like, how that sort of manifests itself conceptually but practically through a series of projects that involve not only group work but individual work as well. And year one is really all about connecting back with materials. It's all about connecting back with individuals, like I said, working in groups, and working towards deadlines. And it's really about engaging with the spaces here that we have at LCC, introducing you to new methods of working, introducing you to new, new practices, new materials, and new technology as well. So year one, acts as the sort of the, the the base structure for you to feel extremely comfortable moving forward throughout the year of learning many skills and working with others. Whereas in year two, it runs on more of a kind of a project basis where we look at specialist ways of working and within specialist ways of working and specialist practice, you engage with many projects and are tutored and supported practically and conceptually throughout those projects on a brief uh, project structure. Now it's really then year two is all about the idea that you're taking all of those skills that you've learned in year one and as part of those projects and applying them to these more substantial projects in year two to build up your skills, to build up your portfolio. And those are the things that will then direct you into your specialism of which is year three. However, like I said before, many individuals do decide after year two to take the year in industry, the diploma in professional studies. And that is something that you can do only at the end of year two and then return back into year three. And year three is all, around, it's all about you, your projects, where you want to take it, how you then fundamentally develop your portfolio. And really year three is about creating strong portfolio de um, devised projects that really fit with a major project and also how, that, how your projects fit with industry. So the professional portfolio processes within year three are really all about connecting you with industry, having your portfolio ready, getting your portfolio to the strongest place it can be through a series of projects that really engage and give you that confidence for when you leave, um, leave, leave the course and completely graduate. So that is the sort of the general structure of the year on year and how it builds on the skills that you get in year one and year two, but really helps you to individually kind of hone your practice and develop your portfolio. Now, as part of this, um, at the end of the years, we also have a showcase, the GMD showcase. And this year, the showcase is on the 13th to the 16th of June. Now, throughout the many, the many years, we have work in progress shows, we have um, impromptu shows, we have internal shows and external shows. But the big graduate showcase at the end of the year is a place for you to celebrate everything that you've done throughout, not just the final year, but everything and your time that you've been on the GMD course. It is also a time to connect with industries and we use this as a time to really bring together a networking event to support you to connect either with industries or partners or studios or individuals to look at how really you can kind of move from being a graduate 
into industry and what that looks like and how we can support that moving forwards as well. One thing I would suggest to really have a look at the variety of the work that the students create, not just on the year three, but throughout all of the GMD course, is to have a look at our specific gmdlcc.com website. Now, this gives you a really great insight, not just to the diversity, but the level of um, professionalism, standards, the topics, and the professionalism of all of the portfolios of the students that have come through the Graphic and Media Design course. There is not only just the, um, the previous year's uh, group and selection of the work that was in the showcase, but we do have an archive of past work and past individual projects for you to have a look at, to see the engaging, enriching topics um, that individuals try and challenge, whether that's, you know, whether that's a particular branding project or a hypothetical project or whatever that looks like all of those projects are there for you to really have a look at the wider community of the individuals that are part of all of the projects and part of the GMD community. And just to talk a little bit about the graduates, many of our graduates go to many, many, lots and lots of different varieties of different places and studios. And we do have a community of extremely strong graduates which go out into the world and really push their skills in very predominant places. We currently have somebody who is the curator and designer of the National History Museum, somebody who is a graduate and goes on to work at the Sunday Times. We have an individual that won an ISTD typography award in applied typography. We have individuals that then also progress to postgraduate courses. We have individuals that not only go to smaller studios, but work as the lead designer as part of the NHS. We have individuals which then come back into education, which are now the course leaders of courses at other institutions. We see our graduates expanding across the globe. We see our students working in a variety of different design situations and avenues. And these are just some of the um, outreach, the outreach places of where our students kind of connect with, where they go, um, and, and the sort of diversity of that as well. Sometimes it is with industry, sometimes it's within uh, further study and other as well. Um, we also have individuals that go to do things that you might not expect. We have many that work, for example, as a performer, as a musician. Um, we have some that work within particular studios like Pentagram and Neville Brody Studio and MASH Studio, but we also have people that might work in-house with a particular, I don't know, um, an architectural firm or a lawyer's firm as an internal designer. So we do produce many graduates and we do encourage our graduates to sort of work with their skills, with their interests, to find their avenue, to find their path. And it is through the graphic and media design course that they can challenge that. And they can also collaborate with others, collaborate with poets, collaborate with authors, musicians, product designers, whatever that may be, within their own personal interests as well. So our graduates go to many different varieting areas, um, not just sort of within um, an individual design studios, but industries that you would never have thought um, that they would have ended up. Um, and just to show you some examples of the outcomes of many individuals, um, I've got a few videos here just to show you um, the type of work that they create.
Great. So that was just one example of a fashion produced editorial publication by an individual student. And I'm going to show you some more examples, but one of the reasons why I picked this particular book was not only because it was um, executed very well, the design, the production is extremely high quality and extremely professional, but the video itself was part of the project. The promotional use of the video for the portfolio, the way that it's shot, the way that it's lit, the way that it's edited, the way that it's composed together, is the kind of work and the kind of portfolio quality that the students on the course um, move on to as that professional practice, professional quality um, portfolio. So we are really interested in the outcome, we are really interested in the process and the conceptual meaning behind an individual piece of work, but we're also focused on how is that presented, how is that archived, how is that used then within your portfolio to really push your career and to get the individual where they want to be. And as part of that, I have a few other examples to show you as well. So that was a very short little introduction of actually a much larger project that was a branding piece for a musical online digital festival. Um, but it was typography based, it was researched, it was kind of customizing the forms and the typography to create the brand and the stylistic approach to it. But it was also the video pieces, the animation pieces and the audio within that as well. So I'm just gonna show you a sort of variety of work pieces that people have created over the last year. And this is another example to go with that as well. Right. So I'm showing you a variety of work here because all of these pieces of work have support from the individual staff, from the technology side of things, from the conceptual side, from the research and the production as well within many of the workshops that happen here at LCC. And that was another really nice example of a online musical production performance event piece using 3D technology, looking at branding, creating a whole world, a whole environment of where their design work can really flourish. And another project which is even different as well.
So this project was a much wider project in the sense that it wasn't just the publication, but this really engaged students in particular on the ideas change, what change means to them, what can change means, how can change be used, large or small. And really much of this project came around through working with others, through asking people, through talking in community groups, through talking people in workshops, and giving individuals a voice of what change might mean to them or might mean to a group of people. And the outcome from this was the publication that you see in front of you, but was also a series of posters, videos that really engaged this idea of the voice of change. What could that be? what that looks like, the possibilities of it, however small or large. But you can see through these three projects that I've just shown you, the variety of opportunities that individuals have, whether it is screen printing, whether it is working in 3D, whether it is working with digital typography or photography, that we give you that opportunity to really take the project and highlight the topic of that project in whichever material is kind of relevant not only for you but for the topic and the communication of that topic as well. So we support this multidisciplinary way of working and we really encourage that through the practice here on the course. And one nice example just to finish this is another piece that I'm going to play and then talk about afterwards as well. Great, so I've shown you some projects there, which are varied in their outcome, but all of them have been through the same process. All of them have been through, a, we consider the design process as research, contextualization, working and speaking and collaborating with others, refining your skills, delivering that output, whatever that may look like, and creating a piece of body of work that is, is has that portfolio quality and really focuses on the aspect of it being part of your character, your personality, for your individual direction moving forward into the industry. And this example was a really nice version of really animation, audio, visuals, all coming together to create a project of which this video was just one part of creating an app and device that really encourages people to play and engage with others. And that was just the one promotional piece that came from that individual project as well. So as part of all of this, many people ask the question, how do you apply for the course? What do you need in your portfolio? And I thought I'd put together a few preempted kind of questions of what this might look like. Now, on the GMD course, we're looking for individuals that have that very kind of nature that want to experiment and explore with materials and whatever that may be. So what we're really looking for within a portfolio is you showing a variety of use of different media and different concepts or, or challenging or looking at different projects in a particular way, but doing that through project-based work Okay, so we're really looking about your process, your outcomes, and your understanding and research of a project, and how you've resolved that through your individual creative output. 
And I would recommend doing that through a series of five or maybe six projects. I would recommend that you start with the project, of your lead project of the one that you feel like is your strongest project. I would recommend that you also think about how you photograph that work, how it is best represented. Does it need photographing and lighting? Does it need looking and um, composing on your portfolio in a particular way to show it in its best light? For example, scale, size, texture. Are they coming across through the photography or that digital example of that work? I would also lead, like I said, lead with a, a strong project, but also end with a strong project and think about your portfolio having a beginning, a middle and an end. Where the beginning and the end lead with those very strong projects. So it's the introduction and the takeaway become really strong projects. And in the middle, a variety of projects which really show off your work. I would recommend at least two to three slides per project and I would also recommend within those projects having a kind of hero image to begin with and showing as an outcome and then having a secondary page which shows the process, research and any kind of technical maybe experiments that you've done or any kind of engagement with the development that shows a particular practice or a particular skill. So we're looking for people that really would um, engage with different materials. We're looking for individuals that really know how to research and develop a project through rather than just single one-off pieces. And that's really kind of, I think, going to be crucial for putting the portfolio together, not just for this course, but I'm sure for many other courses as well. If you do have any questions, um, we can go through them in a second in the chat, but you are more than welcome to also just email myself but there are many other email addresses here and contact details for other parts of UAL that can support you including things like accommodation, fees, student support, general inquiries but do also please follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter to really get an understanding and an idea of what we do through the day to day, how we form those communities, what kind of like activities because we are um, daily posting pieces of work and examples of workshops that are happening now and what that looks like and how that really feeds in to your development and your time throughout the three years. So if you do have any questions now, um, we can go to them in the chat, but that's it from me and thank you very much for attending. Thank you, Ian, for that informative presentation and really engaging content content um, and thank you everyone for joining us today um, as Ian already mentioned if you do have any questions please write them in the control panel and I will um, pose them to Ian in just a sec um, we have a few already um, the first one is asking how does one prepare a portfolio for GMD yeah I mean as I kind of mentioned earlier um, is to sort of present the portfolio through a series of projects okay um we're looking for the sort of the experience of taking a brief whether that's a specific problem a situation or something that's been identified and how that has started through research and then development of that research into some sort of visual form and how that is developed and refined into an outcome so we're looking at projects rather than individual one-off pieces of work. We're also looking at how people use materials to really support those individual projects. Um, so let's say, for example, how they might have used screen printing or how they might have used 3D or whatever that may be. We are not looking for um, fully polished, finished, uh, graphic designers. Um, so please do show a variety of work and, and please do show the technique and the process behind things. And similar to what I said earlier, I would break it into sort of five or six projects. Okay, Maybe the portfolio has, I don't know, 10 to 12 pages, so 10 to 12 slides. I would always have some kind of hero image okay, um, to start a project. 
maybe that might be one slide and then the second slide would be some of the working behind the scenes a little bit of the research and the development and the outcome and then maybe a third page again which shows the outcome and then the next project might start then with another hero image like one solid single image of the outcome so when you're going through the portfolio you really get the sense of that's a project and that's the sort of two or three slides and when you get to the next project you really feel like you know it's changed pace within the portfolio and it's definitely a project okay so we're looking through project work in particular and that's the best bit of advice i think i could i could give people that's great thank you very much another question here is asking how many group projects do you run yeah, there's a variety of different uh, group projects that we run. In year one, we run two different group projects. One of them is really about engaging with a particular object and context that you bring with you to share with others. And part of that is to get to know people, to get to know part of the community and to really kind of, you know, really yeah, just get to know people within um, your class, within your group, within your year group. Then within year two, there is another group project of which you have the opportunity to work with individuals on another course. OK, that gives you a wider sort of scope to um, develop your skills. Maybe it's working with an individual from art direction or branding or whatever that may be to hone in those skills to work with an individual brief. So that's another project. Now, as well as that, there are the kind of extra, extracurricular projects of which we give you the opportunity to work with anybody, which is either from year one, year two, or year three within GND to work on an individual brief um, that is just happening that particular year and they change from year on year and sometimes that's working sort of internally within LCC, sometimes that's working with an industry partner, sometimes that's working with a community partner and they change on year on year. So there are a few sort of what I call like the touch points of working within groups and then surrounded with that is your individual work, your individual projects and then the big individual project which is obviously the final major project. However, within projects themselves, you can work with others to give you support. You can work with others to kind of share skills. You can set up as part of your individual project, a workshop to work with others to get some research as part of a project. So, you know, as much as there are the sort of defined projects where you can work with others, we do encourage people to, to collaborate within their own individual projects as well. Hopefully that's answered it. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's really informative. Um, I've got a few questions over here. Um, do you mind telling us a little bit if the, is this course experimental within design or does it focus more on traditional practice okay so we in the beginning of the course we encourage all students to experiment with materials okay materials and processes and alongside that we do cover the sort of the fundamentals of the practice of design that you will need for industry okay so so let's say for example one area of this is typography and understanding typography how it's used how you lay it out within an editorial piece or whether it's online whether it's print or whether it's a large scale on the side of a building or a bus for example okay there are certain you know um ways of working with typography that you will learn as well now just as much as we go through those sort of fundamental skills we do also at the same time ask you to challenge those skills creatively through technology through materials whatever that may be so we do give you those um, elements and those times to really sort of explore with things as much as possible and for example if one individual does want to do something which is extremely kind of um, um, I don't know um, uh, experimental for example let's say we'll also support the individual's 
in within that aspect as well so we we take a kind of variety approach but i think one of the things that we do and i think i've tried to reiterate a few times within this presentation is the idea of it's only worth having that sort of um, experiment within your work and within that outcome of yes we want to look at the materials and experiment with those materials but it's also how does it then connect with the message that you're trying to say and I think that's what we do um, really well here on the GMD course is that yes we give you the opportunity to do something extremely experimental but also at the same time we ask why are you doing that what would be the purpose of doing that how does it communicate this and that rather than it just being um you know whatever whatever the topic is um you know really kind of grounding it with the, that kind of connection to a particular concept or a particular idea to communicate but that's that's where we come from great thank you very much another one here is asking does this course also allow more analog media such as painting and sketching to be taught or a few traditional medias like photography um, have been mentioned, but someone just wants to see the true um, extent of that and kind of the methods in, in that respect. Yeah, sure, sure. So as much as we talk about technology, we don't always mean digital technology. Um, you know, technology just within the dark room is, is just as relevant in terms of like the ideas of technology, just as much as it is digital. So to give you an idea of that, in year one, you get the opportunity to induct yourself onto many different workshop areas or into many different workshop areas. And that can include uh, photography and darkroom photography, drawing, sketching, um, printmaking, uh, litho printing, um, typesetting, and they're all analog. OK, and also at the same time, you've got the opportunity to look at the creative computing, um, um, virtual media, AR, whatever projection mapping. OK, so what we ask is really for, for individuals to explore as many of those as they can, in a sense, in the first year, because many people might not have had the exposure to those forms of analog material and the digital material. And then it's really about honing those skills. So yes, if you are really interested in darkroom analog photography, yes, that's, that is a route within GMD and you can pursue that within your practice here. But what, I, what we try and do is say, if that is something you want to focus on, have you also considered virtual reality? Can you connect the two together? And we're not saying that you can or you can't, but what we're saying is that you need to try it to possibly learn from other forms of workshops and other technology to improve this one that you're really interested in because there's lots of different methods and ways of working that can support all of that. So what we try and do is give people all of those options and the analog side is a big part of what we do, yeah. Great, thank you for that. Um... Another question uh, is saying um, someone, is pref someone prefers analysis of graphic design, colour and text. Uh, for example, why certain designs attract more customers and so forth. Is this course for them? Um, would you recommend this course to them? It, I mean, it sounds like to me for that individual, um, if you're looking at something like the... Uh, psychology of what I'm interpreting in that question to be more brand focused. We do cover that. However, BA branding would probably go into it in more detail than we do. So it would be worth, I recommend, looking at both courses and seeing which is the best fit, I think. Great, thank you very much. Um, another question is asking, can you? Um, elaborate what are the differences between LCC's graphic design, uh, graph, graphic and media design and the um, graphic design course um, at other colleges within UAL and suppose um, how it does our course differentiate um, with all the other courses available um, at other universities? Yeah so there's two really big areas with that one. 
one of them is the workshops and the individual um, studio spaces that we have. We have a Heidelberg Press. No other institution that I know has a Heidelberg Press. Okay, we have Letterpress, which is part of like the fundamentals of what we do as part of the workshop spaces and printmaking spaces and screen spring, screen printing spaces and how we connect all of those together and not just that but in the spaces within the workshops they are close together so those disciplines interact on a daily daily basis and as part of the support from that is the individual staff as well Okay, the individual staff, not just the lecturers that I've mentioned here that are on the, the presentation, but the technicians of knowing that experience as well. And I think one of the strongest things that we have as well as part of that context is that all of the lecturers are practitioners also in their own right. Okay, so they're, they're creating, producing work, whether that's on a personal level to show, to exhibit as part of research, or whether that is working with industry and working with particular studios. But we also have within the staff an extremely st strong understanding and connection with industry as well. We are good at getting people into positions and we are very good at creating extremely strong contemporary portfolios because we as staff and we as the institution are really aware of what is happening in the industry and as part of that we have industry speakers we have industry talks we have critical forum talks to support all of that nature as well so i think it is a combination of things it's not just one thing it's the combination also, I think this is part of LCC and part of UAL as well, is that, that I think that DPS year is a really good support for people to understand their industry as well. Another thing that we really strongly support is that sort of critical and responsible nature of the design practice and how we look at our practice and how we use graphic design to question things, how we use it to question the world, so not just to create um, you know, something that has, you know, something that really has a strong meaning, something that has a purpose, something that has a connection, something that has a social change. We're good at supporting those projects. We're good at helping individuals find their path as well. And I think that's part of the community. So it's kind of, it's a combination. It's a rich combination of many, many different things, I think. Perfect, thank you. Um, we've got a few more questions surrounding the portfolio. Um, um, they are, um, is it recommended to include only graphics media artwork? And also, how much additional writing or comments should there be in the portfolio? Yeah, good questions. Um, so we are not looking for a fully polished, finished graphic design and media portfolio. If you have life drawing, put life drawing in there as well. If you have sculpture, put sculpture in there. What we really want to see, again, is the project nature of things. So don't, I wouldn't recommend just to put one-off things in there. So if it is, for example, excuse me, something that's a 3D piece that somebody's created, maybe a sculpture, that's totally fine. But we want to see the process that's led up to that outcome. What was the starting point, a bit of a research. So the, the, the portfolio should take us on a bit of a journey. But really what we're also looking for is individuals that are willing to try different materials and different media and have experience of that and, and know and understand that all of these kind of aspects of of, of a creative background in a sense really sort of support their practice and what they do so so through all of these projects we're just seeing the like a high level engagement of materials not just graphic work not just digital work i think it's good to show a variety of works within that as well and in the written aspect of things you don't need to go into great amount of detail i the work and the way that it's laid out, the way that it's photographed in the portfolio 
should implicitly show the nature of the process. So I think you have to choose your images very, very carefully and avoid sort of creating very small thumbnails on a portfolio of a cluster of you know many images because they don't really support and show the process very well. Plus they also can be very hard to see. So you need to think of this as sort of like, okay, how am I telling a journey through these photographs? Do I actually need that image or can I take it out? You know, can I, if I can show it with one image, show it with one image. And a description on the page should be just helping that journey, that process. So the descriptions might be something about the overall project, um, the research, the development, and the outcome. And that would be it. You don't need to go into great detail. And you don't need to describe everything that's on there. If we can see some things being made out of wood, then we can see it. You've got a photograph of it. It's better to use the descriptions as being a kind of a reflective kind of commentary on your process rather than just describing what we see. Um, so keep things to a minimal in terms of text and keep it concise. Um, and I think that will be the best way forward. Thank you for that. And two last questions before we end the session. Um, are there any opportunities to work with other courses? Hmm. Yeah, so in, in year two in particular, that's the opportunity to work with other courses. There are um, more extracurricular kind of projects which are set across courses, but year two has the opportunity to then work with other courses and how they're connected together to learn other skills as well. So it's kind of building on some of the skills that come that individuals have learned from art direction, illustration, visual media, whatever that might look like, to really create this sort of um, uh, studio almost of individuals from many kind of different uh, different backgrounds. So that happens generally in year two. But also if that's something that you're really interested, that can be brought into a final major project. It can be brought into any project later on in year three as well. If that's a, an area of design that you feel is rich as part of your practice, that collaboration, you can really build into that. Um, within year three as well. Great, and last but not least, what extracurriculum activities available throughout the course and also um, run by UAL and LCC? Oh yeah, there's so many. <laughs> um, so one of the things that we're running at the moment as extracurricular is a, is a lecture series, a critical forum series. Um, it runs every week. There's individuals from different practices, different studios, different ways of working, to talk and to share their practice. Um, they are sometimes London-based and international-based as well. So you get a whole variety of individuals um, that you have this, this opportunity to question them one-to-one -one on their practice. But we also run things like a drawing club um, on the other side of things. We also run things which is an open studio for people to share their practice. But there is also opportunity to do things like photography classes and also, um, um, I don't know, silk screen printing classes outside of the extracurricular that we offer. There are also a series of extracurricular kind of briefs that happen as part of the, of the way that every year we make industry connections. The re recent one was with Converse, where individuals get to work either independently or as part of groups to work with um, a, a specific project. And that's not just within GMD, that's within the wider LCC community. So we run many, many, many different kinds from drawing, like I said, analog drawing projects to working with big industries and working with, with partners as well. But we're also interested in speaking to individual students to set up their own organisations, to set up their own groups, to start something up as well. So if there is something that a particular group want to want to focus on, we can work with those reps, we can work with those partners to do that as well. Perfect. That was so informative. Thank you so much, Ian. Um, that's the last of our questions. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us and um, putting your questions forward. Um, thank you, Ian, for taking the time to um, talk in such a great depth about um, 
our graphics and media design course. Before we part our own ways, do you have any last words of wisdom um, for our audience? Um, for me, no, I think two, two things I think is really interesting. Do have a look on that gmdlcc.com website. I think it really does represent us very well in the work that individuals make. And especially for those who think the individuals are thinking, oh, is it analog, is it digital, is it a mixture of both, what kind of projects? That I think that is a really rich area um, of kind of what we do on that sort of day-to-day -day basis and that as long as Instagram. And I think that does give you a really good insight of what, what happens at the ground level and what happens day to day. So I'd, I'd recommend to do that. Um, I'd also recommend, just like I said, to work on that portfolio, to get that tone of voice right within the portfolio, just to make sure that it does show that variety and it's structured in that project way, because that's what we're looking for. So that would be my two takeaway leave bits from this. Perfect. Thank you so much. Once again, thank you all for joining us and thank you, Ian. Um, we hope to see your applications um, come through in the next couple of weeks um, or months. Do check out other open days we have running online and in person, um, as well as um, do have a look at our portfolio session that we have running um, on the 2nd of uh, December and a student um, panel where current students and recent graduates talk about their experience. But other than that, um, we hope you found the session really informative. If you have any further questions, do take down the contacts on your screen um, and do get in touch with us. Um, I'll be ending the session now. Take care and bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.